In this video, we'd like to pair the flexibility and power of the programmability of the Arduino, that is, how we can use software to control these digital input and output lines. So we're going to pair that with the power of the transistor. And by the power of the transistor, we mean the ability of the transistor, transistor to amplify current and do that switching that we've been discussing in previous videos. So what we have here, just to get started, we have this simple code here already loaded into this Arduino right here. And we can see what we're doing is we set pin 5 to be an output pin. This is the digital pins on the Arduino. So it'll be an output. And then what we're doing here is in the, the main loop statement here, the part of the Arduino code that executes over and over again. We're just making pin 5 high. Then we delay a tenth of a second. Then we make it low. Then we delay another tenth of a second, 100 milliseconds here. And as we know, the loop function just goes over and over again. So we sort of get a high and a delay, a low and a delay, and then back to high again. So that's sort of what we have preloaded in the Arduino. Now what we'd like to discuss then is we'd like to come back and talk about some of these high current devices that we've been talking about in the last couple of videos here, in particular something like a, a nice loud buzzer, a motor. Motors can be used in robotics and things like that to turn wheels and gears and make wheels go and stuff. And then we have this nice bright light bulb here. Now we acknowledge that light bulbs are probably on their way out Technologically speaking, things like these LEDs are coming in, but if you need some quick and easy and cheap brightness and stuff, light bulbs still aren't a bad choice. So what we'd like to do then is discuss, well, is it possible for the Arduino to turn these things on? And we'd like to discuss something here that's also a nice lesson in the difference between voltage and current. Okay, So it turns out when we use the Arduino, as we've discussed in a previous video here, The digital pins can be plus 5 volts when on, and of course they're plus 0 volts. I guess I don't need the plus, sign, the plus sign with 0 when they're off, so 5 and 0. So you might be thinking, well, this is a buzzer here. Will 5 volts power it? I don't know. This is a light bulb. Will 5 volts power it? This is a motor. Will 5 volts power it? 5 volts is, uh, well, it's over halfway to 9 volts on a battery here. It's uh, you know under halfway for like a 12-volt battery. but Addressing the voltage itself isn't the only concern going on here because remember there's two things in electronics here. These are certainly the voltages here that the Arduino digital outs rise to, but there's also this issue of current here. So the other question might very well be is, okay, we can get 5 volts out of the Arduino output line. But does it have the current to really drive this buzzer to be nice and loud? Or does it have the current, enough current, to get the filament in this light bulb to heat up enough so it'll glow? Does it have the current to energize the coils of this motor so that the force between the armature and the magnetic field inside this motor is strong enough to get the thing to turn? The voltage is fine, sounds good, but what about that current? It turns out that the output of an Arduino is only good to about 40 milliamps, 40 thousandths of an amp here. That's all it's good for. So it can certainly go up to 5 volts at only, only 40 milliamps. So the question is really, is 40 milliamps enough to get this motor starting? What about this buzzer? What about this light bulb? Let's just see about that. And if it's not, let's see if we can use a transistor to fix that. So here's the Arduino here. And just to convince you that it's actually working here, what I'll do is I'll take this LED, which we know the Arduino can turn on straight up, and I'll sort of plug it in there to pin 5. So the part of the LED that I plugged into pin 5 is the side opposite to the flat side, positive terminal of the LED. And I'll go ahead and just plug the battery into the Arduino like this here to get it powered up. So we're going here. And the LED, of course, isn't going to flash just yet because I don't have it grounded. I don't have the complete circuit. But if I hold this onto the pin of the LED here, it starts to flash. So that's the code I have running, making pin 5 high, then low, then high, then low. Okay, so pin 5 is a pin that seems to be turning on and turning off. Hope you can agree with that. So what we'll do first is put the buzzer in and see if the Arduino is able to get the buzzer to go. So I'll plug the red lead of the buzzer into pin 5, which we know is pulsing on and off the black lead in the ground. Okay, So it appears then the Arduino is able to get the buzzer to go on, although I don't know how it's going to sound on the camera. The sound is a bit weak, it's just not a good strong buzzer, so we'll see about that. See if we can fix that. And pin 5 and ground here on the light bulb. There we go. The light bulb is just barely turning on, just barely. But see, that's that 40 millivolts. The Arduino just can't get a light bulb to come on all that. Strong, it just doesn't have the current. How about the motor? See if we can get the motor to turn it all. Oops, I just barely heard the wire came out. Yeah, just barely. The motor is just barely turning. Okay, so what we have is we have a very capable, Ardu capable Arduino here. It is able to get the buzzer 
the buzz sort of anemically, the light bulb to very come on, barely come on at all, and the motor to barely spin. You're surely not going to build a robot out of a motor that's spun like that. What can we do to get more current? Well, why don't we just use that 40 milliamps and why don't we use that that 5 volts and that 40 milliamps that we do have available out of the Arduino not to power the devices directly. Let's not do that. It's clearly not going to be enough power to do that. Okay, let's not try that directly. Let's instead just use that Arduino 40 milliamps 5 volts. Yes, as you might guess. Why don't we just use that to turn on a transistor? Let's use that to feed the base of a transistor here. Let's use these quantities here, these fairly meek quantities here to input the base of it, go into the input base of a transistor. Let's turn the transistor on. Then as we know, through the amplification abilities of the transition, I'll, transistor, and I'll even show you another trick in this video, we can really deliver some serious power to some of these devices here. So just to do a bit of wiring here then, we know it's pin 5 we're after here, so pin 5 on the digital is right here. I'll connect that directly to the base of this transistor here. That's what pin 5, the pulses that come out, we're going to go right into that transistor. We need to have a common ground between the whole thing, so I'll go from the ground here of the Arduino over to the emitter, like that. So just in case you can't see the full circuit on the video here, I have this fl the flat side of the transistor is facing up in the video right here. And this red lead here is coming out of pin 5, it's going right into the base or the middle connector here. This orange end is coming out of the ground on the Arduino and going to the emitter side of the transistor there. Okay, so even as we speak, I suppose the Arduino is already turning on the um, turning on the transistor. So what we'll do now is let's connect the, the, the emitter, the, the thing we want to turn on here, not to the Arduino because we're overtaxing the poor thing. Let's connect it directly to 9 volts. Let's see if we can be clear about what we're doing here. What? I thought we are using the Arduino for power. No, let's not do that this time. The Arduino is a bit weak. It's just a small microcontroller. It doesn't have a lot of current it can supply to things. But of course these batteries do, right? These batteries do have all that supply that we need. And so what we'll do then is instead of relying on the, the weak Arduino power, let's use a 9-volt battery in the usual configuration here. I have the red lead of the 9-volt battery connected to this very top row right here, and I have the, the, the positive end of the buzzer connected to that top row. And I have the other end of the buzzer connected to the collector of the transistor. And so when the Arduino via its 5-volt supply turns on the transistor, that will let the current surge through the 9-volt supply through the device and we'll see what we can get. So I'll go ahead and plug in the battery right now. And then the last thing that we need to do, well, let me then plug the battery just for a moment here. We need to also ground, we need to have a common ground between the Arduino supply and the 9-volt battery supply so they all know where zero voltage is. That's what I was lacking right there. So there we go. Let's connect the battery now. See, now what we have, we have a nice, nice strong buzzer going on there. Much better volume, not so anemic like it was before. How about that light bulb? Same connection. I'll have the light bulb go into the 9 volt supply and have the other side go into the collector of the transistor. Something like this. And let me connect that 9 volt battery now again. And there we go. Look at the nice flashing I'm getting now. So again, you have the Arduino turning on just the transistor using its 40 milliamps and its 5 volts just to turn on the transistor and the transistor then is what causes the battery to power the device the battery's ability to supply current to surge through the device now we have a nice flashing light bulb on powered with the Arduino the logic of the Arduino but the, not the other 9 volt battery this one here is the one powering it and lastly let's go to that motor let's go to the motor here and see if we can get, make a nice spinning of the motor here there we go. You can probably hear that now. The motor is doing a really nice job spinning now. It's pulsing. This is a form of DC speed control for these motors here, but the motor is definitely on now. So there's your secret right there, is that that's the real power between combining an Arduino and a transistor. You use the output of the Arduino not to power devices directly, but only to turn on a transistor. Then you allow transistor action to really give the devices the power that they need to operate at their full potential.